talking about what drives people i think uh, one of the key things that really stands out from your profile is your presence in the ai startup space you have been uh, working on like moving out of academia and you have been working straight away into startup space which is really really interesting mm-hmm. so can you like before before i get into details of those things what was your motivation to consider uh, the messy dirty startup space uh, <laughs> moving right out of academia i mean academia wasn't wasn't a short term like you did your phd and going from academia directly into a a a, a startup space why not take the normal research scientist job at a big name company uh, but mm-hmm. start off from a very scratchy version of your idea <laughs> Good question. I honestly actually really love that question because I I want so many more PhD students to hear my story and hear how this whole line of career is actually not only viable but also better. <laughs> but it's so subjective. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt because this is my personal journey based on my personal experience. Um so I kind of so my motivation to want to do startups perhaps was my lack of motivation to to join a big tech company <laughs> i would say um so t- towards the end of my phd i got pretty much disillusioned with the whole like reward system of just publishing papers for the sake of publishing papers and um which unfortunately is a part of academia no matter what and by academia i mean i, I always knew that i wanted to be in industry setting be a fundamental research lab or like a startup like a deep tech research startup or a startup or now you know basically having my own startup uh so i always knew that it would be in the industry but the choice between doing industry fundamental industry research lab and uh basically startup was just bit about what gets me out of bed in the morning <laughs> to be honest with you so i spent like i was lucky enough that i could spend like a year and a half throughout my phd in you know these big tech uh research labs and the more i learned the more i realized that that reward system just doesn't drive me i could see that you know p- very accomplished super smart people who were just chasing citations and like trying to publish the more they can and put their names on this paper and that paper purely for the sake of that and that's like as bad as it sounds it's just unfortunately a game you have to play right it's not that you have a choice now it is for you know hiring for a company i'm interviewing so many phd students and so many research scientists in these big research labs and honestly i can just it's i don't know maybe 20 times it has happened that i can remember in the recent history that people would tell me that oh let i have to reschedule my interview now because now i have to find which paper i can submit to say norips or nacl or acl the deadline is coming just because you have to right it's like publish or perish game the other thing that made it kind of even more for me to get kind of wanted wanting to detach myself necessarily from that being my 100% of my life uh was this you know whole benchmarking craze that we had the whole like let's beat the basically be on top of the leaderboard kind of a game which of course also inherently i think is really not motivating for me personally right just what's the point of making 1% you know yeah increase yeah, in the accuracy what would change in the world does it make and to just make you to know, add some salt to that moon you know i'm an immigrant myself we've been living here now for what like around 9 years like miles and miles away from our parents etc et and we work so hard and i'm like why would i spend my mm-hmm. life on doing that when i can probably make real world impact by doing the exact same thing but not publishing and also just hopefully getting some better feedback which is real users and not just a bench you know just meeting basically uh people on leaderboards so that just meant that i i definitely wanted to work on something in real world and of course i know this this story that i'm t- telling is very subjective and research labs also have like applied science but in my personal experience at the end of the day no one still knows how to run hybrid research and what happens at the end of the day is that there's still this resistance and there's this disconnect is still that makes the transfer basically uh of technology whatever you call it to product really 
uh, slow and hence re- startups where you're a tiny team laser focused at a particular mission which hopefully is grounded in a particular reality which is a product it is the is the way to go